You can download the silhouette to work on this project if you wish, it's uh, in the description below. The first thing I did was to trace the outline of the silhouette on the boy in the uh, tracing paper. You can do it in vellum paper or any type of parchment paper that it lets you see through. You can do the whole image that I'm providing or do uh, just one or two elements. It's up to you and then you can add more elements as you wish. That's the fun part of uh, creating a painting. So I did the boy only and then I'm adding the uh, wooden dock on the um, this little leg. And I'm lining it pretty rough. It's just not no details, just the lines. The uh, pencil that I'm using is a pastel pencil. That's my favorite uh, thing to use because I have noticed when I use the graphite and I paint over it, it still shows even though that I'm using a softer graphite and if I use softer graphite uh, pencils um, it stains the paint and I kind of don't like that so the um, the base that I'm gonna put uh, first is gonna be uh, burnt sienna, which is the brownish, reddish brown color and white and that's what I'm choosing this typical uh, similar pastel color for for that purpose i will modify as it goes on the drawing um, so i'm not concerned about that right now i'm just concerned about you know the position of the uh, the boy where the elements are going to be and um how is it going to flow um, I apologize for the shaking. I didn't notice. I wasn't aware that uh, it was shaking that that is strong with the fan on my studio. The uh, I'm using a very simple set of brushes. I have a variety of brushes in um, in uh, several brands of paint. Uh, I am listing the paints uh, colors that I use. It's like a four or five colors that I use on this description. So make sure that you check that out. But it is between the liquid text and the basics acrylics that are all acrylics that are just different brands. Um, of course, there are some brands that I prefer and they're better quality than other ones. But I wanted to try and test this one in this in this painting. Now this painting is five by seven, so it's it's a small and it gives me uh, opportunity to play with um, a gamma of uh, different brands and uh, and test the paints that way. I am gonna mix the uh, the burnt sienna first with uh, titanium white. And I'm gonna give it a coat on the uh, on the panel. And I do this very often because it just it just helps to cover the uh, the area in more in a more um, unison way. And also it, it creates some depthness. Um, I paint really uh, translucent sometimes with the acrylics, and like in this case, I'm gonna be doing that because of the lake, the water, and I wanna to have some of that uh, dimension of the ripples and things like that. So I would like to have the highlights and the shadows and you know, the contrast, what it is. Um, and that's what I try to put the, um, the first coat first. Now I did apply several coats. This is not the only coat that I think that this little painting in total has like a, probably five or seven coats uh, off and on. You will see it through the, through the video. If there is something that you don't like or you want to change it later, please do so. Don't feel like you are um, obligated to finish it in a certain way because that takes the fun away of your creativity. Now I'm doing the the uh, some of the wrinkles on the jacket and the the folds and everything on the boy. Um, I pretty much want to want to do that. I want to show some softness on the. Uh, on his outfit so I, I'm choosing the round brush even though that is too big for this mini painting it's a small painting so you play with your brushes as you wish I chose um, a round brush and then two flat ones with different thickness and different whiteness and um, the round one which is the cat's uh, tongue that they call them is around the edge uh, for the background mainly and then 
I think I used at the end one of those outliners, the, the liner brushes for the uh, very, very outlines of the jacket and shoes and, you know, the minor details. So just what you have, look around and uh, don't go over and, you know, spend, you know, and, uh, so many of those brushes that are so expensive. Just try what you, you have around. Um, one tip that I will suggest is make sure that you feel comfortable using the brush, that the bristles are still good for you to play with it. Otherwise, it would just cause frustration. The brush has to work for you, not you for the brush. So make it fun. I want to follow the um, the ripples, uh, the ripple effect between the uh, you know the dock, the beginning of the dock, the lake, and then the line and the horizon too. So I will be working in different colors and hues, and you know on the um, those tiny little lines that you will see working on the uh, on the painting. The colors that I have uh, used on this one are the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. Of course, they come from different from different brands. Let me just hold them in here. Um, <clears throat> they're Liquitex. The basic is for the student grade, and I have that one on the um, Patalo blue, and then which I used a lot. You get a nice deep purples with this with this blue and then the red that i used was liquitex um which is uh, naphtal prism and it is artistic um acrylic artistic color so liquitex and i mix those two for that purple that deep uh, purple and from then uh, i'm gonna be mixing it with more white or yellow to get different tonalities on the on the painting as we go along now the yellow is is from the artist love and it's a um, br brilliant yellow and mm, I'm not too fond of that brand and I will have to do another video on that and explain the why. Um, but right now I use two colors of yellow for the um, for this little painting. The other one is Liquitex and it's a heavy body, so it's a little bit more. Uh, thick and uh, it's opaque which is Naples yellow hue and uh, between those two I will get the combinations that I want for this particular uh, raincoat for the little boy and you know the orange that I'm gonna be knitting and anything else that I will be mixing it with the green one that I have and this for this particular project was the uh, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing a rye it's like a exercise here Phallocia 9 green blue shade which is made by Liquitex acrylic artistic artistic color so um, and I have two um, manufacturers one from Blix art acrylics it's a burnt sienna and the other one is from artist love acrylic which is a burnt sienna also and this is one so far some one of my favorite colors and that's what I buy usually in a, you know from different manufacturers to test them now the uh, my idea on this painting is to have a horizon I don't want the horizon line to be to um, mark so I'm blending it but between the uh, lake the uh the the lake line and the horizon and then the sky i want to make make it some transition that it is lighter and i want to have some kind of fog or mist between the lake the horizon line passing the ducks and then a little bit darker where they are close the uh close to the dock with the um the wooden panels that start i hope this makes sense <laughs> Remember to subscribe and like this channel. Let me know your comments, your ideas. If you would like to see something else, um, I will be um, uh, taking into consideration some suggestions. You can um, message me or email me. Now I am using the flat brush 
for because of the area so i need a larger brush and even though that i'm going around you know the um the details of the ducks and everything right now it's not that much um important because i'm just putting the coats the layers on on the top of the um on the top of the, the sky i want it to be a little bit darker and then graduating into the light uh, more white was added to that purple um color combination that I had already on in my palette. Now that purple that I just started, um, I added more blue so I can have it more deep. So you're going to have to play with the color combinations. There is no secret combinations of exact measurement like a cooking uh, um, cooking recipe. So I don't, I don't do that. I pretty much every paint talks to you. It will talk to you and see what kind of color or tones you want to put in there what kind of values so but i know i wanted to start with the uh, rich purple and uh so you just have to play it i added enough uh, paint quantity for to finish pretty much this this painting this time but in case that i'm uh you know i have to mix again at least have a concept okay I, i'm gonna add half and half first and then start adding 10 percent more of one color or 10 percent of the other and see how that changes in my in my my tonalities and my values. On the wooden deck, I wanted to capture the um, the texture of the wood and you know the old uh, brittle pieces, and it's going to have several coats of different colors, uh, color combination. You're going to see from the purples and the indigo, and then the violets, and then uh, orange, and a whole bunch of uh, other stuff in there that it creates. It gives the illusion of that depthness on this particular project. Now the yellow coat, uh, coat of the boy, I just started with the um, the pale color, uh, which is Naples yellow on the um, Liquitex heavy body. And I'm just mixing it a little bit with white to give me the highlights. And some of the folds are still bleeding through from the first coat with the burnt sienna, if you can see. Then I'm adding a little bit of the purple around the, uh, the seams. So I don't. I want to preserve those those folds, those those uh, that organic uh, position of the boy. I'm using the same uh, color uh, yellow for the rope. The rope organic is just mo moves around, flows. It's just hanging there freely. No, no a straight line. I don't usually don't do a straight lines. <laughs> And I'm bringing some of that leftover yellow into the uh, cracks of the, uh, the wooden deck. I load my, my um, I rinse my brush and and then I clean it up in a little um, rug, a clean rug. And then, but it is still with uh, some holding water in there. There's still water in there. And then I add the color, the next color. So that's what it looks kind of translucent. And, um, this gives them you know you can still see the other colors when you finish the painting you can see the um where your brush has been your your painting talks to you it tells you you know where the brush brush marks are and and how it was the painting apply i wanted to buy the plank so i put a little bit of white in there between the cracks and then a little bit of highlight. Now for the ducks, um, I just grab uh, pure white. It won't stay like that. Um, there is still a little bit of the uh, the burnt sienna there, so it's blending with that. Um, by the end of the piece, you will see some of the uh, purple, the indigo, and other colors in there that it will give the, the shape of the uh, duck's body and the wings and the part of the tail so i hope to um to capture that this time
they are too large for my liking and I think I'm gonna start trimming them a little bit without being too obvious and, and hard on the edges so I'm gonna start reducing their size on these little ducklings I had switched to the outline brush and you can see it's totally beat up my poor brush but I still love it he um, you know I have the tendency to use my brushes all the way until there is pretty much one hair is still standing or no hair at all I'm sure I can use that stick for something so <laughs> my brushes get very very beat up on, on my hands so um, but this will give me uh, more proximity on the on, on the outlines without having to use the the round brush that i selected for this time i am trying to preserve the depthness and um, the textures of the the ripple the ripple effects the little waves on the on the legs so and i'm using the tiny little um lines and then rinsing the brush and then carrying water and blending it so it, it it bleeds through and taking care that it's no it's not dripping down too straight so it looks like a more organic like organic flow so and it will have several coats like this very light coats one on top of each other so On the beginning of the canvas, or where the deck starts, it's going to be darker in there. I have the um, the idea of having a shallow area, so it's going to be darker in there uh, on the purple side. So there's going to be more bluish, greenish, and, and dark purple. The boy has some pants showing um, below his raincoat, so I want to make sure that I don't forget those before drawing the um, the outline for the boots. And I probably will do some bluish, uh, dark bluish, and there with some highlights for that color on the, on, the, on his pants and more obscure or darker uh, on the boots. So I have to make the contrast there. So I'm mixing the blue and green pretty much equal parts right now and then I'm adding some of the purple that I already made so <laughs> this will bring it a little bit darker so that will be my boots I don't have black um, not because I don't have it I do have it on my collection however I try to minimize the use of black just because for many years I used black I love to use black I like the punch that it gives it's just that I'm trying to challenge myself it's like okay how dark how dark can my dark can be and um, so it's just a game um, of uh, testing because I can get up and just get the tube of black but I want to make sure that how much I can mix the colors and that's the fun part play with it see how how dark can you get your colors the ones that you have without going for the real color in there and uh and see if you can you can get the the tonalities that you're looking for and it makes it fun because if you are traveling or you are visiting some places and you want to carry a you don't carry 20 40 50 tubes of paint or so uh you know you're trying to um, make it more practical and it's easier to transport four or five tubes of paint or something like that than you know a full bag of paintings that probably you're not going to be end up using but you do need your primary colors so I want to make sure that the dog has a little bit of reflection on the opposite side. So and now I'm outlining the um, the little boy's uh, raincoat with the same purple, the dark purple, and a little bit of the blue too. So, and I'm going with the lines with my little outliner brush, and then making it wet 
and going over and softening that area so it will just give me the the shadows will be there so the darker areas so it will guide me when i apply in the, the brighter yellows I'm bringing in some of that, um, what is like a Turkish blue now in a, or aqua, dark aqua blue into the wooden uh, deck and then between the cracks. I'm also carrying it into the water too, like a couple little splashes and, and um, lines that I'm blending. First put in the line of, with color and then blend it with a little bit of water. It's interesting how with a little bit of patience the painting, your painting it starts transforming. Uh, many times if you don't like the um, the outcome or you feel frustrated just let it sit re let it rest uh, walk away and then come back later or start a new project doesn't matter um, but um, don't be in the destructive mode and then you know toss it or punish yourself self punish yourself and says okay I'm not gonna paint anymore because I'm not good you have to practice there is no no other way around uh, you have to connect your right side of the brain and those signals have to come to your hands and you know the visual connecting the visual if you are looking at your subject or a magazine or photo or something it has to make like a round uh, circle of um, and synchronize those movements on your brain and images and come into your hands so it's, it's, it, it, it really is a practice is practice um, everybody can do it everybody are trying to inspire you know as many people as I know that don't be afraid it, and it's just a process it's just it's just like a learning math like a learning the multiplications when we were little and you know we didn't learn it in one semester and not even two for me it took me a couple years but <laughs> that is for another video <laughs> i want to put a little bit of darker on the sky then darker transition to, to lighter color and then the horizon line and then I want to put a little bit more translucent on like a fog or mist or something between the uh, horizon line and the ducts where the ducts are sitting and then darker for the, uh, the beginning of the panel where the wooden deck is. So that's what you're seeing right now, me applying the, uh, the sky right on the top, like a little bit darker on the, on the purple that I had, that I mixed first. There's the shaking of the camera. I'm sorry, I apologize for it. No, it's not an earthquake. It's just my negligence to look at the film and see that the fan was blowing my camera away. <laughs> I promise I will pay more attention next time. <laughs> I did not want to cut this part of the film where it was shaking because I wanted you to see the process and the transition of every stroke and how the, uh, the figure, the whole painting came to play, so. Now on the raincoat, I'm adding a little bit more white and then just emphasizing the, the highlights um, areas, you know, without losing those, those folds that I already painted previously there. Now coming with the bright yellow, 
and I would just go over the jacket and this paint this body texture is a little bit more translucent without even adding water the only thing is that it is like a more like a cottage cheese texture I don't know if it is um, um, a chemical rea um, reaction to whatever you know materials or supplies they're using so I'm not too fond of this brand and uh, like I said before, I'll talk about it this bef uh, later, but not right now. And uh, but I'm carrying the yellow on the um, raincoat, and then on the duck, uh, two ducks beaks, and then the beaks are not gonna just stay yellow like that. And uh, they're gonna have a tiny little um, shadows of a purple, and then the orange, and uh, more high highlights, so it looks like a little bit more dimensional. Even though there is tiny, you can. You can gain a lot on a small in it, miniature paintings uh, if you put the effort on it. Um, in the past, I did paint more miniature paintings, but uh, no anymore <laughs> because I was very um, comfortable with the small sizes. And then I have to challenge myself. You have to challenge yourself once in a while and see, okay, what I am not doing or producing because of fear or because I'm not confident enough. And for me, it's, it's attacking large pieces. And you know, I, I have done large pieces, but it is no, I have to really step out of my comfort zone. So that's that's one of my challenges. I have a couple in mind that I really wanna do and and the canvas is still there in the walls of my house, just, but they're blank. There's nothing painted in there. So anyways, I'll come to those later on in life. But for now is, um, this one is five by seven again. It's a small little painting and it is it is fine. You can, you can um, magnify the drawing. You can uh, alter the size of the drawing and do it for a larger, like 11 by 14 or, you know, 16 by 20, any size that you want. So show me show me your creations email it to me or post it uh, i would like to see if you really try this this subject and then see how it came up i am adding the the yellow um the pale yellow the na what is it the uh naples yellow on the rope and then i'm adding the highlights the titanium white on the top so in the top will be a little bit lighter and in the bottom of the rope it will be more like a bluish uh cold colors like the, the purple and uh the dark blue that I put like the ones on the, on the boots and things like that so you will see those colors blending in there as the progress on the on the video here now I'm adding the white on the uh, two ducks and um, even though that it looks plain white it is not there is a couple colors in there already blended and um, it's gonna be more emphasized with the purples and the other uh, violet colors that are going to be reflecting from the bottom and the part behind of his their tail and their between their wings so it gives them some volume that it looks like they actually have big feathers because they do they have those beautiful big feathers on their sides that are so so cute i i love the dog's faces it's just one of my my uh favorite since i was a kid even though that this painting is going to be too small for the tail but at least it gives you the, the silhouette now i did uh put the little eye but it's not convincing me so i'm blending it out which it, it will create some kind of shadow or or dimension on his head which is is, is nice you're going to see it at the end i'm going to be using a pin a long pin that i have and that will be just a tiny little dab of the darkest colors that i have on my palette one for each duck and uh, and it, that seems to do, be doing the trick for this particular uh, piece now i'm reshaping the ducks and i make them a little bit smaller and trying to you know emphasizing their shape more like a duck and not like a like a chicken so <laughs> but I don't want a straight uh, hard line so I'm putting the outlines and then I'm going back and blending it with the dark color so you will see me doing that back and forth several times in the video and that's what I'm doing now I'm going with the dark colors between the rope so I want to make sure that it has that texture that it gives you that that texture that feeling that is a thick rope, uh, rope in there
if you like what you've seen please if you like what you're seeing be um be generous be kind and share it with your friends I'm beginning to put the darker colors on the beginning of the um, the panel and I want it darker and then lighter on the purple and then darker on top like I said before the um, the uh, the sky the horizon uh, touches the um, the lake so you will observe that close to the deck and the rope under the roof the water is a little bit darker and I imagine that there is not much sun on that area so that's what I have in mind and, and I'm trying to put it into my, my painting here. I continue carrying the, uh, the horizontal lines and adding the same colors around the, uh, the rest of the painting as a reflection. It's just um, something that it will give them a little bit more dimension because they are a mix with water and uh, so it just creates one layer over another. I mean you can use some of the um, some people don't like to use water because it really breaks the pigments down but it is it's a preference choice for me it works fine uh, you can use some of the um, you can use some of the blenders uh, specific blenders that they have you know in the market and then mix it in instead of using water I just for me it's more uh, more convenient to use the, uh, the water for this particular time if I'm doing other like let's say if I'm doing other medium like this one is is canvas is fabric with a uh, yeso but if I'm doing like a, a like a bag of painting over another medium I do use the uh, the preparation blenders that they have the special blends that they have for the um for the paints that way it doesn't break the pigments and they stay they stay pure in their purity on there so So I'm adding the part of the wings on the uh, on the dogs, the two dogs. So they are a little bit more on the the violet car color. They have more blue, more I mean, more white on that combination of um, the dogs. I'm combining a little bit more of a light like color on the wings, and um, so they can start gaining so his dimension. So they're not just flat white. It's just it doesn't. It just looks like a sticker instead of uh, something that I'm trying to uh, um, Apologize for the screaming in the background. That's my parrot that he's ready to come out. So I'm gonna try to to finish this this uh, recording. Um, I'm putting a little bit more blue on the pants. It's a lighter blue now with the same mixture that I did first with the green and blue, and now I'm adding a little bit, a little dab of um, white, so to create a little bit of a highlight in dimension. And I went around with the boots too, so.
want to make sure that I don't lose those planks on the uh, on the boardwalk. So it's, uh, I'm going with the darker color in there, which is the blue and the um, the green mixed. Was a petalo blue and phyllo and nine green. So on a liquid text. And I have all the colors, like I said, the materials that I use for this particular project in the description below. So feel free to uh, use them as a reference or use the ones that you have around. If you don't want the uh, the purple lagoon or lake, you can do any color that you want. Don't feel shy on experimenting. You can do, you know, blue or greenish blue or aqua blue, any color that you want or orange, you know, no, there is no rules attached. Just be, be whatever you is inspiring you, go ahead and do it. Now in my in my mind I have this worn deck that is moldy and you know it's just worn and used and cracks and everything so I'm trying to put different kind of colors in there and this muddy color seems to I really like I really like this one because it's, it's like a grayish greenish grayish and uh, and and it just gives them that that rough uh, worn look and I want it in, into the cracks. Now I'm creating orange, orange uh, for my red and bright yellow, and that will be around the um, little bit on the dog's beak, and you will see it on the deck also, and on the um, some reflections on the rope too. So I'm gonna be using this several times throughout the painting. I am wetting the brush and um, then drying it in a wet, um, in a clean rug that I have on my lap, but it is not completely dry. And then I load it again with paint. So that's what you see in here, it is translucent. And you can see the strokes, the previous strokes that we already um, uh, show, that I already show and apply previously. So you will see the, the, the umber and the blue and grays coming through. I keep going back and forth with the little lines and the ripples in the water that I, it, I, I believe it will add some movement. So that's what you see me going with tiny little lines and then blending them and back and forth. So that's what I'm doing every time that I make some new color. I try to put a little bit of that in the water uh, area. It might look that I'm adding just completely white, but it's actually, there's a couple of tints of color in there and it is adding more dimension on that body and the feathery area without painting every single feather. It's just, it gives you the illusion. It fools the eye and the brain is trying to give them a little bit more dimension because you can see the tonalities, the little values in there, like a little purples and yellows and, and oranges too. Now in the bottom of the uh, the little birds, I'm going to add more purple, it's going to be darker colors on the purple side, the darker purple that I have and probably more blue too, the blue that I use for the boots. Mm.
every time that I put the position of the canvas like this, horizontal, um, I mean vertical, it, I, I have to be careful that it is already drying or it's dry and there is no fresh uh, paint or dripping paint. Water is still going through because it can make nasty marks in there. Um, so I lift it up so it can give me a different angle on my view. I just like to, like to do that or put it upside down that a little bit more ahead on the video you will see that it's upside down also and that brings a new punch to your brain so it forces it to see in a different way that it's just the logical way that it wants to be seen The brighter color on the rope on the yellow is going to be on the top with a little bit of highlights right on the edge of the top area and then darker colors on the bottom. And with darker colors I mean the colors that I already created darker, the purple and then the um, indigo that I had. Um, almost dark dark colors in there. I, sometimes I use one and one and then I mix them and I add sometimes the, the dark red also to see how, how dark I can get them. It's just playing around. I guess if you don't wanna practice with the rope, you can go ahead and just do another plank in there. It's up to you, you know, you can modify this design as you want and see how creative you are. Add another flying bird in the sky or or airplane, I don't know. <laughs>
I have to make sure that that horizon line is not crooked and it doesn't look too um, uneven because it really creates a hide uh, a hard edge on the on the eye side. So want to make sure that your horizon is, is straight as much as you can or you can go ahead and add some tape and paint it many people will prefer to do that and they do that so I don't I like more organic feeling so but I want to make sure that it is no no lean toward one side either or go back into the deck with darker color and uh, you know you can still see the other colors the other shades bleeding through which is that's what I like on this this particular um, texture on the on the wood panels. more dark purple in uh, into the uh, bottom the part of the tail of the two ducks and um, and I will go ahead and emphasize more the edge where they are touching the water too so it looks darker in that area So what I do, I put the line first, the outline, and then I rinse my brush and I go back with that wet brush and then blend the, uh, that edge so it doesn't give me a hard edge. Sometimes I do prefer hard edges and it just depends on what I'm making and at this particular time I would rather have just have it blend through with the other colors so it just blends to the, to the colors that have been laid there and into the canvas. I did the first intent of the little eyes, but I think I'm gonna go back and uh, and what I end up doing was using a little bit of pin, uh, pin the tip of a pin, um, a needle. You can use a needle or a toothpick, and then just tiny little dab of the darkest color that you have already mixed into your palette, and do the tiny little uh, eye for the dots, and they seem to be work fine because the the painting is so small that it just is, it just gives them the not the dimension but it gives it the highlight i put white first and then the black and then a little bit of the, the other colors blend into it because it was wet so it turned pretty uh, pretty good for my liking to make the um, the boy's hand with a little bit of the orange and then add a little bit of the white and it just gave me the perfect skin uh, that I was looking for for this particular piece. The boy is completely covered so that was the only place that I, I wanted. I wasn't sure if I wanted some gloves or or his hands but you know he's a boy so he probably has the just his hands there. <laughs> So I decided to use the skin color, um, the lighter skin color.
I'm going around with the um, darker purple and um, the rain um, the rain coat and just those final edges in there to give them a little bit of dimension so it pops you know the difference and it doesn't blend just with the water or the background without creating um, a hard edge so I put a little bit of line and then I just rinse the, the brush and then I go over so it blends into the canvas now time to put it upside down and <laughs> I do this very often with my paintings this will switch my brain and it, it does it just your brain just makes so much sense it wants to you know inter interpret whatever it makes sense to to his side so when you turn your piece upside down you're forcing it to to stop doing that and actually seeing the negative space and other shapes that that uh, they're not quite like you know he thought they were so, and it's easy for you to see okay what doesn't seem right or what seems to be out of place or what shape is kind of odd and then uh, you can modify from there it's just it's a good practice I, I really like it and, and you know I implement it in every single piece that I have Okay, this is the pin that I use for uh, the duck's eyes and I just grabbed the darkest color that I have in my palette which this time was the blue with the red that I had combined before and, um, and green and then just put a little dot in there for the eyes, this little, this little guys in here. I want to make sure that I preserve those those folds, those shadows, and and those wrinkles that it gives them that kind of cute organic look onto the uh, boy's coat. So. You can see now with the dogs that they have the purple. Now that it's upside down, it's easier to see the that tail. You know, it's. This feather in the back and then the uh, the purple the deep water touching before the body touches the water and uh, and you can see some of the dimensions on their side wings
this part is i think is the worst part uh, um at the end of the video it got really really shaky and uh, i apologize for that again i did not want to cut it out of the editing and uh, make it a shorter video i wanted you to see the process the full process and the transition uh, the transformation from one uh, you know brush stroke to the other one so i apologize for the shaking but um i selected this time to just leave it in there so you can actually see the the full process
if you haven't tried painting upside down I will strongly recommend you to do a small piece or so and try it and you will see how that actually helps you on your <laughs> on your uh, creativity it is it's different I cannot explain it uh, in detail but it, you just have to practice you have to uh, do the hands-on to be able to see what I'm referring to The final touches just few little hot and lights without just tiny little lines around the, the voice codes and the raincoat and then the um, little pants. If you like this video and you would like to um, learn more about how to paint and do some other uh, diversified crafts, just remember to subscribe and click on that bell button so you know uh, when the new video is up for viewing. Share it with your friends, be kind, and if you know someone in your life that will benefit from watching this lesson, just you know share it. Thank you, we appreciate that. And pretty much this is it. and the paint is done new friends on the lake is born 2021 january 2021 so thank you thank you for visiting thank you for watching in the comments let me know any suggestions and uh, thank you for stopping by